Psalm 94. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger, and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, The Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chastiseth the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity, until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous, and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries, and I hope you guys are having a blessed day so far. Today's Sunday. Uh, I went to church earlier, and it was such an amazing message. Uh, if you guys have uh, went to church too today and you have something you want to share, share in the comments down below. Hopefully it can encourage us, uh, our brothers and sisters. We definitely want to encourage one another as we see the day approaching of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's coming soon, and it's... Every day that I wake up, I just thank God that I'm alive and that I'm able to, to preach his word, that I'm able to still show the love of God to people because we live in a lost and dying world. We were all once dead in our sins. We were all once hopeless without hope that of ever seeing God and being with God forever. But now our hope is found in the blood of Jesus. And now that he's risen, and now that he's given us his Holy Spirit, we can have hope that we will be resurrected to new life in our new glorified bodies. Now, I just want to speak on the image of God real quick. Just just straight from the Holy Spirit, you know, me just talking and I just got done praying. So I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to just say whatever he needs to say. But I want to talk on the image of God. You know, every single human being has their own perspective, has their own image of God. And most people are wrong in their image of God. And that's the truth. How can I confidently say that? Well, we know in the word of God that it says narrow is the way that leads to eternal life and broad is the way that leads to eternal damnation. Most people are on the broad way to hell. Most people don't know God. Being saved is knowing God. Being born again is knowing God. And Jesus Christ is the living God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. What is an image? What does an image do? Is it something that we see with our own eyes? It can be. I believe also an image is something that reflects. Like in a mirror, if you look at yourself, it reflects an image. Well, it says in the word that we are the, made in the image of God. So it could be something that we see with our own eyes. 
but I also believe that it's something that reflects in actions and deeds too. Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, has always been, always will, and always will be. He left the throne, the throne of his perfect, perfect heaven, wherever that was, location, I don't know, but the Bible says he left his throne to come down in human likeness. And he was the sacrificial lamb that was slain so that we could be made whole. It's such a selfless character that God has. Such a love that God has that I don't even think we understand fully yet. We're going to fully know one day, but right now it's something that goes and has me in awe. of Just how good our God is and how kind and merciful he is to just leave the perfect place of heaven and come down in this broken world to be broken to be bruised for our iniquity, to be beaten, to be stripped, naked, humiliated, so that some will come and find the way of life through him. Love is sacrificial. True love, agape love, it, it, it demands sacrifice and in, the, in a free-willing way. What do I mean by that? Well, we know the most quoted verse in the world, I mean, at this point, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. How do we know that he loved? Well, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall have eternal life. But what does it mean to believe? There's many perspectives. It then goes to every human has their own belief. Every human has their own image of God and their own perspective and what they think. But at the end of the day, it's not about what we think or who we create in our own head about who God is. It's about what his word declares. His word declares he's holy. His word declares he's just. His word declares he's merciful, loving, kind, but also he must bring forth judgment. He's a just holy God. Think of it as uh, a judge. He is a judge. He's the judge of all judges, the Lord of all lords. And there's a day coming up when we will all individualizedly go through a systematic holy, orderful way of being judged in our life by the creator for everything we've done, everything we're going to do. But the biggest one is going to be, did we truly believe in Jesus? Did we have the correct image of God in our hearts? Did we accept the true living God in our hearts for him to live inside of us for we're the temple, right? We're the temple of the living God. Did we truly grasp and understand the realness of God? Because at the end of the day, guys, none of this life on this side of eternity, in this world, is going to last. This world that we see, the, the materialistic things, even the things of uh, what we think is right and wrong, it's all going to vanish. It's all going to dissipate. It's all going to go away because there's a new world coming. God's going to do away with this world. And he's going to create a new one with new people, in meaning our spirits will be in the new bodies. We're going to be resurrected just as Christ was resurrected. But you won't be resurrected You don't if you don't have the correct keys. There are keys to the kingdom of God. There are keys to the kingdom of God that unlock doors that you can open and that are freely there to here to be able to give. And it's free. It doesn't cost a thing. But it does demand change. It does demand a, a, a lifestyle that is renewed by the Holy Spirit, not by you and me. Nothing that we can do. It is finished is what Jesus said. But we have a choice to make. And many people choose to create their own image of God in their own head, in their own mind, in their own way. If God does this, this is my God. This is my God. This is what my God allows. Oh, my God allows me to be able to do this and that and this. But what does the God of the Bible have to say? That's why we need to read his word. We need to pray and ask Holy Spirit to come and open up our eyes to remove the deception. Because guys, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But it's even a more fearful thing to never fall into the hands of the Lord. To never go to your knees and truly ask God to open up your eyes and show us, show me who you are, God. I don't want to make up my own God. He, he made me. He made you. Who am I? Who am I to say, oh, well, God's like this? Who am I? I? I won't even understand. I can't even grasp fully how massive, how big, how good our God is. Not yet, at least. So I just wanted to just kind of talk to you guys right now. Just there's a, there's we're living in a season right now 
where we see the wickedness. We see prophecy coming to pass. There's so many people who are coming to the Lord, and I thank God for it, but there's also a great falling away. There's also a lot of people being deceived. There's also a lot of people who are stubborn and, and, and don't want to truly know God in his fullness. They just want to live their life with God here in a little box shoved up on this top shelf. And okay, that's my God. That's why I choose. Now I want to go do my own life. How does that make sense? You just created your own God. That's called idol idolatry. Idol. Id idolatry. God destroyed people because of idolatry. And, and he's sitting there and he's waiting. He's not one to, to force. He's not a dictator. He is one who created us with free will to choose, to decide. And I just, I have a will. I have a wants. I have desires. God has will. He has wants and he has desires. And I know that one will, one way, one desire of God is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance, which repentance is a change of mind. It's a change of mind and then it, it, it causes through a belief to, to live differently, to walk different. And, and, and the thing is, there's so many people who are nitpicky, who, who, who set up, they're so religious, they're so set up in their own religious system that they haven't understood what it truly means to walk in the way of the Lord, to walk in the spirit, to believe in Jesus Christ. So they set up and they cherry pick the Bible verses and they go, I like that one. I like this one. I like that one. I'm going to use that. All the other stuff I'm not going to really care about because I've gotten the main ones situated. But the word of God, the whole counsel of God, the whole word of God is to be balanced out. I know in Proverbs it says a false balance is an abomination to God. So how much more is us cherry picking little Bible verses an abomination? If we don't have the full counsel of God or at least understand the basics of what it means to follow God, how will we one day be before him and him allow us into his kingdom if we've rejected? My people perish for lack of knowledge. There's a lot of sincere people and I believe there's a lot of sincere people who are sadly sincerely going to hell. And that concerns me. I can't do anything except preach his word. I can't do anything except strive. Try. And it's not by my strength that I do this. This is where there needs to be a balance. It's not my works, but it's definitely I will work. It's not faith plus works. It's faith works. Faith works. The only way that we're set right before the Lord in his sight is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Through faith, do we believe in him? How is someone going to tell me that they believe in Jesus, yet their life, there's no fruit? Now, are there seasons where there's a little bit of you think, oh, is that tree ever going to produce this fruit? There's a waiting season. Sometimes we go through seasons where it's just like, oh, it's a hard one. It's a dry season. But, but through faith and believing, through continually watering this tree, continually tending to the garden, there is eventually there will be fruit produced. And that's what I believe. That's what I'm learning. I'm growing in wisdom every, every single day because God is infinite. We can all grow in wisdom. This channel is literally named Seeking Wisdom Ministries because I'm daily seeking for the wisdom of God to direct my every step. And I pray you guys do the same. There's so much distractions in this world, especially in this day and age. And, you know, I've grown up in this. But I'm now seeing it for what it is, which is distractions. It distracts us from God. Technology. People who are bad influences can distract us from God. That's why we need to truly pray and ask God, who do you want in my life? Who do you want me to surround myself with? Of course, we preach to the lost, but... Do we fellowship with the wicked? What does light have fellowship with darkness? When we preach the word, we speak life. We speak truth. We speak it, whether it offends them or not. Because guess what? I, I'm not here to, to please people. I'm not here to make people feel comfortable. I, I want them to be comfortable, but I, I'm not here to make them comfortable or make them feel comfortable if it's lies. Anyways, just wanted to come on here and share that there's a lot of people who have their own image of God. But the only image that we need to understand is that Jesus Christ is that image of the invisible God. And we want to reflect that image of God because we're created in the image of God. God is holy. God is good. 
God is loving. But guess what? Even in love, there's a lot of different definitions of what is true love. A lot of people are seeking, I want true love. What is love? What is true love? Is God still loving even though people are going to hell? Is God still loving? Of course he is. But a lot of people think he's not. God wouldn't do that if he's loving. See, people have different definitions of love. But it's not about our definitions and our own thinking, oh, this is right, this is wrong. It's about his. Because God is the one who sets right and wrong. It's not us. But there's a lot of people who they make up their own God, their own image. And that not ought to be so. We need Jesus. He's the Lord. We need Holy Spirit. He's the one inside of us, directing us, leading us. And that is the spirit of Jesus Christ. The spirit that dwelled in Jesus. It says the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the fullness of the deity of God dwelled in Jesus. Jesus is the flesh of the Almighty. Emmanuel, God with us. And his spirit is infinitely perfect. And he can infinitely perfect us every single day if we have a heart that is willing it's all about a choice. It's all about a decision to be made right with God by his blood that he offered to the whole world. And it's his will that none should perish. But there's a lot of people every single day dying without faith in Jesus, dying without faith in Jesus, because they, maybe they've never heard it or they heard it and they rejected it. They've rejected his son. Anyways, I love you all dearly. I'm going to end in prayer real quick. Lord, I just lift up your name, Jesus. I thank you, God, for this time to be able to speak to my brothers and sisters all around the world, Lord. You know their certain situation. You know the struggles that they deal with. You know the heartache that they've gone through. You know, Lord, everything. And for that, I glorify you that you are a knowing God. And that you can relate because you went through suffering. You went through hard times. You went through rejection. So you know how to comfort. And I just thank you, God, that you are so good to us. And even though we don't deserve anything, you give us everything. And I just pray you comfort my brothers and sisters right now. You lay your hand upon them in the spirit and that you protect them and that you give them peace in their hearts to continue to seek you and rest in you for you are our rest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare all these things. Amen. God bless you all.